you are listening to human tragedy 24 hours a day. Human news is just tra tragedy, that's all it is. Which means the earth is dying. And Allah told us the only thing that can bring it to life and save its life is what? The Book of Allah. The problem though is some people who, are, who want to further kill are using the Book of Allah. <laughs> They're using the Book of Allah not to spread life but to spread death. To spread death. And they claim that they have the right understanding of the Book of Allah. And I argue the following. Here's, why we, here's how we as an ummah have to fix this problem. Nothing, please listen to this carefully, it's going to sound politically incorrect, it's going to sound controversial, some of you will be offended, but I don't care. لا نخاف في الله لو Nothing is above the Book of Allah. وَكَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ هِيَ الْعُلِيَةِ Nothing is above the Book of Allah. Unfortunately, in our times, sometimes you and I have an idea, we already have an idea, and now we want that idea to be justified by the Book of Allah. So we develop our idea first, and then we find the deal in the Book of Allah. What was on top, Qur'an or your idea? Your idea, and you put the ayat underneath it to justify. The ayat of Allah are now being used to justify your philosophy. You are not extracting the philosophy and the thinking and the solution from the Book of Allah. You already have the solution. You just want to justify it from the Book of Allah. This is a disservice to the Qur'an. For example, there are people who talk about the mission of the Qur'an is da'wah. Where did you get this from? I don't know, but the mission of the Qur'an is da'wah. So if what, what, what about the ayat of talaq? What about the ayat of taking care of your parents? What about, no, no, yeah, those are important, but the real mission is da'wah. So you decide which ayat are the real mission and which ayat are the... How do you decide? Where did you come from? Who are you to put that rule on top of Allah's book? Da'wah is part of Allah's book's mission. It's not the only mission. It's not the only teaching. I was recently giving a khutbah on Suratul Mujadala and I said, look, every surah is a curriculum from Allah. Every surah is a khutbah from Allah, a sermon, a maw'idah from Allah, yes? And Allah knows what is most important, what is next, what is next, what is next. What He mentions first is the most important thing. Then He mentions what comes next, what comes next. Like any teacher does, the most important lessons come first. Surah Al-Rahman, we just heard the recitation. What's the most important part of Surah Al-Rahman? Al-Rahman wa'allam al-Qur'an. Everything else is what? Second. Alam tara anna Allah ya'lamu ma fi al-samawat wa ma fi al-ard ma yakunu min najwa thalathatin illa huwa rabi'uhum wa la khamsatin illa huwa sadisuhum wa la adna min thalika wa la akthara illa huwa ma'ahum ayna ma kanu. Wait, najwa means people conspire against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People are conspiring sometimes to undermine the Prophet's mission. Sometimes they're conspiring, they're making conspiracy secret meetings to kill the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's a pretty serious problem. But in Surah Al-Mujadala, that is problem number what? Two. What was problem number one? A woman has a problem with her husband. What? No, 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 yeah, that's a spot. The real issue is Najwa. Who are you to decide? Allah teaches the way He wants to teach. I, I'm reminded of the question Allah asks in Surah Al-Hujurat. قُلْ أَتُعَلِّمُونَ اللَّهَ بِدِينِكُمْ Oh, you're going to teach Allah your deen? You're going to teach Him your deen? You decide what's more important. You know? So we, what we do is we take selections of ayat. These are the important ayat. These are the ayat that we have to have our curriculum with. The rest of Qur'an is secondary. Even if you don't say it, you're thinking it. And that thinking is problematic. We have to give justice to the Book of Allah. We have to give justice to a surah. We have to stop thinking that some things are important and some things are less important. There are some things that are in order, there's priorities, but those priorities are not decided by you. They're not decided by me. They've already been decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have already been decided. Now think about this. Now, this is the last thing I'll share with you and I'm done. Then I just want to hear from you guys. When I was in New York, 
when I was not a religious person. I was a Muslim, not a religious person. When I first got exposed to Islam, the thing about New York is it's a crazy place. Every masjid has its own Islam. Literally, every masjid has its own Islam. You know, kullu hizbin bima ladayhim farihun. This is actually, I saw it in New York. Every group believes they are the right one. And they will give you a lot of khutbah and a lot of lectures about how wrong the next door neighbor is. And then when you go to that one, they will tell you how perfect they are and how evil those guys are. And I have a problem that I like to go, when I learn something, I like to really learn it. So I go to group number one and I learn so much from them that I become part of them. And then I say, okay, I've learned enough. Now I'm going to go to group number two and I'm going to learn so much from them, I'll become part of them. I know it's crazy, but I did that. <laughs> so I went from one group to another group to another group to another group. I went through, I, I was a tourist. Okay. And when I was done, I realized something. I realized something. Every group decides one thing is the most important thing. And their entire picture of Islam is based on that one concept. One group says the most important thing is da'wah. Forget everything else. Another group says the most important thing is how you look. You should look a certain way. If you don't look like this, then you're not a good Muslim. Another group says, no, you have to have these, these books. If you don't go through these books, then you're not a good Muslim. You don't really know your Islam. And they're not talking about Quran, by the way. There are other secondary books. If you don't have those books, then you're not a real Muslim. Every group has certain curriculum. That's, the mo that's what defines their Islam. And not a single group said, you know, the curriculum for the Muslim should be what? The book of Allah. Wa kalimatullahi hiya uliya. By the way, did every one of those groups quote something from the Qur'an? Yes, but that was, not, that was only to justify their position. And that was only to prove that the other guys are going to hell. That was the only reason. Why would Allah give us this book and say, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا فِي Why? This book, if you give it justice, it will cause union. And if you don't give it justice, it will cause Division. We're not holding on the way we're supposed to. I'll tell you, you know, uh, to make that last point that I just made, which was that we have to think beyond groups. We have to think of ourselves as Muslims. We have to think of ourselves as Muslims. We have to bring normalcy back to the Ummah. The only way to do it is again putting the Book of Allah in its place, in its proper place. I'll tell you a small story. I was giving a lecture in Birmingham, England. And if you've been to Birmingham, England, uh, make a istighfar. But anyway, I was giving a lecture in Birmingham, England. And Birmingham is a very interesting place. The, the mas there's a few masajid there, and every masjid is very different from every other masjid. These people hate each other's guts. The only time they agree with each other is when they have to get a halal burger. <laughs> other than that, they do not like to see each other's face. You know, they, don't, they completely hate one another. They're different schools of thought. I don't, I'm not here to name names. I, I know their names, the group names, but I don't care. I, I think that is so useless that I don't even bring, pull it out of my mouth. That's why I don't name those groups. Khair. So there was about 2,000 people in the audience. 1,000 to 2,000 people in the audience. And I was, giving an, I was explaining a, one of the stories from the Quran. And a young man and a woman came up to me. Sadhguru, can we talk to you for a second? I said, yeah. Uh, we are actually uh, Baha'i. We're Baha'i. You know, Baha'is believe in some really out there stuff. But they still consider themselves Muslims. We, we, we're Baha'i and um, we really love listening to your lectures. It, helps us, it helped us change a lot. We didn't know the Quran says these things. We wanted to come here, but we're really scared. Because if people find out here who we are, I think there's going to be a problem. And we brought 20 of our friends here too. But we just want you to know quietly that we appreciate what you're doing. I was like, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. And I'm really happy you're here. I'm done with that conversation. And the guy comes up, brother, 
I know this is a Sunni program, but I'm Shia. Is that okay? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's okay. Okay. Because my, my Shia friends and I, we listen to your lectures. I was like, that's cool. Keep it up. Very nice. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, I won't tell anybody. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I have had Christians come up to me and tell me. We've been watching your videos. I was in Canada. I was at an RIS convention. A group of Canadian women came up to me. Numinally can, right? I was like, yeah. <laughs> We're a group of Christian women. We've been studying the Quran for the last year with you. And we only came to this convention because we wanted to thank you. It's helped us change a lot. Christian women studying the Book of Allah. May Allah guide them. You know, if I was still wearing my group labels, those stickers from New York, as soon as I saw a Baha'i, I was like, hey, come here, let me talk to you, let me fix you. If I saw Christians, I would go straight after Jesus. If I saw the Shia, I would go straight after their aqaid and the ikhtilafat. Go, I would attack them right away. I would do that. But you know what? I understand something from the Book of Allah. We are supposed to be farmers. We are supposed to be what? Farmers. A farmer puts a seed in the ground. Then he puts water on top. Then he makes dua to Allah. Then he puts water on top. Then he cleans the soil. Then he puts the water on top. Then he makes dua to Allah. Then he removes the insects. Then he puts the water on top. Then he makes dua to Allah. And for months and months and months and months and months, he sees nothing. He sees nothing because the seed is where? Under the ground. And he doesn't get angry. Hey! Why aren't you growing? Let me pull it on, let me... That is not how things grow. You have to let things grow. All you have to do is provide the water. And Allah's responsibility, I don't grow a plant. Allah grows the plants. Allah grows the... Why did He give us this analogy? You have to spread the book of Allah and Allah will make the changes. You just have to spread the book of Allah. You're not responsible to change people. Lasta alayhim bi musaytir. You're not in charge. Stop pretending that you're in charge. So many people come up to me, brother, mashallah, you give some good da'wah. Tell me how I can tell my brother to start praying. Tell me what I can tell him. I was like, I don't know what to tell you. Because maybe you haven't put enough water, not put enough water yet. And maybe you're putting water, but some plants grow slowly and some plants grow quickly. It's not about what you say. It's how patient you are with people. It's how patient you are. Yusuf alayhi salam's sons, or Yaqub alayhi salam's sons, they disobeyed their father or no? They were a source of sadness or no? For years and years and years, they're a source of sadness. And at the end of it all, they make tawbah or no? They take their time, yeah? Some, some seeds take a long time to come out. فَصَبْرٌ jamil. Yaqub alayhi salam doesn't turn to Allah. Ya Allah, give me something I can say to my sons so they can change. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. We are impatient with each other. We want changes to come like that quickly. If the best generation took 23 years, first of all, we're not the best generation. But if they took 23 years of exposure to this book, our challenge today is let's re-expose the people to the Book of Allah like they've never experienced it before. So they can remove the assumptions that they've had about the Book of Allah. Non-Muslims have misconceptions about the Qur'an. And my conclusion is, Muslims have misconceptions about the Qur'an. We have to fix the misconceptions for the entire world. We have to show the, the world how beautiful, how remarkable, how incredible, how loving, how merciful, how addictive this book is. That's what we have to do.